Hello, my name is Jonathan Takeshtat, and I am presenting our paper, Terse, Tiny Encryptions and Really Speedy Execution for Post-Quantum Private Stream Aggregation, on behalf of myself and my co-authors at Notre Dame and Carnegie Mellon. In the era of the modern internet, huge amounts of user data are generated through interactions with technology companies and their platforms, such as Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, and many others. These industry players wish to analyze this aggregated data from users to improve their advertising and services. However, Users prefer to keep their data private, making such analytics difficult to compute. For many applications, general approaches to private computing are simply too slow for the demands of the modern internet. Private stream aggregation protocols were developed as a response to this. PSA protocols allow secure and private aggregation of user data for later computation. PSA was first introduced by the work of Shu et al. in 2011. In stream aggregation, we have a scenario such as the one shown in the figure here, where users will take their time series data and send it to a central aggregator who will then compute and learn the sum of all user data at a particular time point. However, you will note that this is insecure as the aggregator is able to learn the data point of any one user. To handle the case of an untrusted aggregator from whom we want to protect users' data, we can use private stream aggregation. In private stream aggregation, users encrypt their time series data before it is sent to an untrusted aggregator. The aggregator is able to learn a sum of user data, but is not able to learn any information about users' individual data points beyond what learning the sum would already reveal to them. Since PSA was introduced originally, there has been a large body of research work in this space, including work on introducing post-quantum security to PSA, work on improving efficiency, or work on expanding the available plaintext space or improving the robustness of private stream aggregation. Existing works that present post-quantum private stream aggregation face difficulties including poor efficiency, high complexity, or being founded on questionable security assumptions. So that's the past work that's gone on in this field. And now I'll talk about our contributions. In this paper, we present our scheme TERSE, a simple post-quantum private stream aggregation scheme with very good efficiency. In this work, we use the two techniques of coefficient wise packing of data and very aggressive pre-computation to construct efficient private stream aggregation directly from the ring learning with errors assumption. Besides our theoretical contributions, we also show practical contributions. We implemented TERSE and we show its efficiency regarding both computation and communication speed. We compare TERSE to other state-of-the-art research works in post-quantum private stream aggregation showing its efficiency as compared to very similar work. We also examine the impact of trusted execution environments when used to guarantee robustness for private stream aggregation. These contributions provide concrete benchmarks for researchers and developers to rely upon when exploring private stream aggregation. So now I'll talk about some related work starting first with general methods of secure and private computation. 
Fully homomorphic encryption schemes refer to crypto systems that allow users to manipulate data while it is encrypted without learning anything about the information that is encrypted. However, it is highly intensive with regards to both communication overhead and computational overhead. Similarly, secure multi-party computation distributes computations between multiple parties so that no one of them, or even collusions, are able to learn anything besides the final output of the protocol. However, multi-party computation requires multiple rounds of communication, which may not always be feasible. Hardware guarantees from trusted execution environments can allow secure functions to be computed. However, these environments may have side channel attacks or other vulnerabilities, and they may face limitations at scale. Now I'll talk about work in private stream aggregation and more specifically, the works closest to ours, that is recent works in post-quantum private stream aggregation. The LAP scheme published in 2018 uses fully homomorphic encryption mentioned on the previous slide as its underlying method and it achieves a larger plain text space than some related work. However, it is much more complex and intensive than is needed for private stream aggregation. The other three works were published in 2020 or 2021, so these are recent works. The last scheme uses secret sharing, which makes it efficient at smaller scale, but infeasible at larger scales. The protocol presented by Ernst and his co-authors use key homomorphic pseudo-random functions and rely on the rounding with errors function for their works post-quantum security. However, the security of the rounding with errors scheme has been debated. Finally, the SLAP scheme constructs private stream aggregation from ring learning with errors. This scheme is simple and more efficient as compared to its related work, but it failed to address the ciphertext expansion that is often inherent with schemes based on ring learning with errors. Now, I'll give an overview of private stream aggregation. The scenario is that we consider one single central aggregator that learns the sum of all users' data points and nothing else. The adversaries that we consider against PSA are honest but curious, and we consider any collusion of users and the aggregator as long as at least two are left uncompromised. Other works, particularly those in robustness of PSA, may have stronger adversaries than honest but curious, but that is out of scope for our work. At different epochs, users will send encrypted messages to the aggregator. Now I'll talk about what a private stream aggregation scheme actually is and how we describe it. Private stream aggregation schemes are defined by three algorithms. Setup, shown at the top of the figure, involves the trusted distribution of keys by a trusted third party, secure multi-party computation, or some other method. Encryption, shown on the left, shows that users will encrypt data points at some given time. Those ciphertexts will then be sent to the aggregator, where, as shown on the right side of the figure, the aggregator will aggregate these ciphertexts and will then learn the plain text sum of all users' inputs, but they will not learn any other information about user data. Now I'll give a little bit of mathematical background that we need to understand how TERS operates. In particular, I'll be talking about the ring learning with errors problem. For those of you familiar with homomorphic encryption schemes, a lot of this syntax should be familiar to you. So in ring learning with errors, we consider operands in the ring RQ, 
which is described as the integers modulo q or polynomials over that space modulo x to the n plus one for some large power of two n. The ring learning with errors problem is as follows. Choose a secret value s from rq, usually from a small error distribution. Then stated simply, terms of the form a sub i times s plus t times e sub i appear random under the conditions that a sub i are public and uniformly random values, that the error terms e sub i are small and kept private, and that t and q are co-prime. As stated, n is a large power of two, and the coefficient modulus q may also be a large number, hundreds of bits wide. Thus, the polynomials that we deal with in ring learning with errors and in crypto systems based upon ring learning with errors are very large operands and may lead to both computational and communication-wise complexity. With this background, I can now finally describe terse in terms of the three algorithms that describe a private stream aggregation scheme. First, I'll talk about setup. Setup is a fairly simple function. The most important parts are choosing parameters Q, the ciphertext modulus, and T, the plaintext space parameter, in a way that allows you to perform aggregation on user data from whatever domain you're dealing with. We also choose a random oracle hash function H that maps from timestamps to RQ. The most important part is that we choose user secret keys randomly from a small distribution, and we set the aggregator's key such that we have an additive key correlation where they all sum to zero. Next, I'll describe the encryption of terse, which would take place on client devices. Suppose we have a user, user number i, and they have a piece of data x sub i t s from some timestamp t s. What we'll do is we'll break up this timestamp into high order bits uh, capital theta and low order bits tau, such that tau can be described in log n bits for this capital n here being the uh, polynomial modulus for the ring learning with errors scheme that we're working with. Essentially, and much more simply, we're going to use tau to index into polynomial coefficients. We'll write a sub theta as the hash of theta, and this essentially acts as a public key. Then we write p sub i t s as the product of the public key and the user secret key at this particular coefficient determined by tau from the timestamp. We'll also draw a noise term e sub i comma t s. All of these steps can be pre-computed, notably, as none of them depend directly on user input. Finally, we return a ciphertext that is just the sum of the pre-computed product of the public and secret key, the noise term scaled up by t, which as a reminder is the plaintext modulus, and finally, the user's input x. Now, I'll describe the aggregation algorithm of terse. Users will send their ciphertexts c sub i comma t s for i from zero to n to the aggregator. The aggregator will first pre-compute this product term p prime, which is again the product of the public key a sub theta, this time with the aggregator secret key s prime, indexed at the coefficient given by tau. Then they will simply compute the sum of that term and all other user ciphertexts. We see correctness because the keys all sum to zero 
leaving out nothing but the noise, which is reduced and removed by a reduction modulo T and the sum of the original user inputs. Terse gains its security from every user ciphertext being essentially their input plus a random pad of an RLWE term. For the full proof, please see our paper. So some of the benefits of, of TERS lie in first its efficiency. First, we have smaller ciphertexts, which consist of only a single integral value each, and that is due to our aggressive pre-computation as well. Also, simplicity is a benefit of TERS. The scheme is very easy to understand and work with. Because of that, TERS is very easily compatible with other private stream aggregation improvements. And we show that in our implementation by including fault tolerance via the kryptonite scheme using Intel SGX for secured hardware. So for our implementation, we implemented both the client side of TERS on a Google Pixel 4a smartphone and the server side aggregator code on an Intel Xeon CPU, both using C++. We utilized Intel SGX for the server side to implement fault tolerance with Kryptonite. We also had an interesting improvement to Kryptonite where we optimized it by only passing a list of faulting users instead of the original works formulation of passing a list of all users. We also used improvements such as the residue number system and number theoretic transform to accelerate the polynomial arithmetic that was done. So we did a lot of experiments for our paper and I'll show off some of the more interesting results in this presentation. This figure shows the server's latency, that is the runtime of the aggregation function as the number of users increase. You'll notice we test some pretty large bodies of users as shown on the x-axis, and that the runtime scales linearly with the number of users and is fairly small, especially for cases with a thousand users, which is a common use case. We also noted that the plaintext space did not have much of an effect on server latency, and that neither the scale nor the plaintext space significantly affected the client latency. Another highly interesting set of results to show is a comparison to other related works in private stream aggregation. This isn't a perfect comparison as it's very hard to get an apples to apples comparison across different research works. However, we can still make orders of magnitude observations. You can see that TERS performs orders of magnitude better than every other post-quantum private stream aggregation scheme by about 800 times to over 5,000 times for aggregation, and that its runtime is comparable to that of pre-quantum PSA works. To conclude, in this work, we presented TERS, a simple post-quantum private stream aggregation scheme that uses pre-computation and coefficient packing, coefficient wise packing, sorry, to enable high performance. We compared TERS and other related work experimentally, showing strong improvements over related work. And we also showed the performance of TERS with fault tolerance integrated. We are looking towards future work in applying TERS in practical scenarios and going beyond just additive aggregation. Thank you for listening to this talk. I'll now pause on the references slide. This concludes my talk. Thank you very much for listening.
Uh, hello, my name is Alexandros Bakas and I will be presenting to you the paper Symmetrical Disguise, uh, Realizing Homomorphic Encryption Services from Symmetric Primitives that I co-authored along with uh, Eugene Frimpong and Adonis Michalas at uh, the Network Information Security Group at Tampere University in Finland. So, the overview of this presentation is as follows. Uh, first, we will um, recall some uh, background information on homomorphic encryption that will help us introduce uh, hybrid homomorphic encryption. Uh, and then, uh, based on these notions, we will uh, present the main contribution of this work, which is a symmetrical disguise, which is a complete protocol based on hybrid homomorphic encryption. Uh, and finally, we will we'll conclude this presentation with uh, uh, a brief mention of the security analysis and uh, uh, our experimental results. So, uh, the first thing that we need to do uh, is to highlight the, uh, the motivation of this work and why do we need homomorphic encryption and hybrid homomorphic encryption. So, uh, the need for operating on encrypted data is derived from the following uh, observations. Uh, first of all, once we store data on an untrusted cloud service provider, either unencrypted or encrypted with a key which is known to the CSP, privacy becomes an illusion. Uh, moreover, once data is encrypted using traditional cryptography, they become useless in the sense that whatever modification we want to do on our data, we have to download them, decrypt them, uh, perform any operation or modification we want locally and then re-encrypt them and re-upload them to a CSP. Uh, finally, uh, you may wonder why uh, isn't homomorphic encryption enough for that and we need hybrid homomorphic encryption and the reason is that homomorphic encryption, uh, despite its advantages, uh, it's still very computational expensive for deployment in real-life scenarios. Um, so, kicking off uh, with homomorphic encryption, we have two main entities here, Alice and Bob, where Bob plays the role of a cloud service provider, and a homomorphic encryption scheme usually is initiated by Alice, who outputs a plain text vector X, encrypts it locally, and gets an encrypted vector C. As a next step, Alice outsources the encrypted vector to the CSP, where it will be stored. Now, at a later point, Alice can issue some queries for some specific functions f. Usually in homomorphic encryption, these functions are either addition or multiplication functions. Uh, and now the CSP, given that query and the encrypted vector, can actually perform some computations directly on the encrypted uh, vector without decrypting them, without decrypting it, and send back to Alice um, an encrypted result that is none other than uh, the application of the function f to the plain text vector x. Now, having that, Alice can decrypt that locally and, and recover the result f of x. So, a bit more formally, uh, we have uh, a key generation algorithm that takes as input a security parameter lambda and outputs uh, a public key, a secret key, and what we call an evaluation key, which is used for uh, evaluating different functions. Uh, sometimes in the literature, you can find the evaluation key uh, being part of the public key and not um, being mentioned separately. Uh, then we have an encryption algorithm that takes as input a message M and a public key PK and outputs an encrypted message C. We have the evaluation function that takes as input the evaluation key, a function F and a sequence of uh, ciphertexts and outputs an encrypted result CF. And finally, we have a decryption algorithm that takes as input the secret key ciphertext C and uh, outputs a message M. Now, naturally, running the decryption algorithm uh, with, um, <coughs> with a message that was computed during the evaluation algorithm, uh, that is CF, uh, would yield F of M and not just M. So, um, moving forward to hybrid homomorph encryption, um, the main difference is that in this case, users encrypt their data locally using a symmetric key K for an encryption scheme, for a symmetric key encryption scheme uh, SKE. Uh, and then, as a next step, the users generate a public private key pair, PKSK, for a homomorphic encryption scheme. Uh, as a next step, the users will encrypt their symmetric key K uh, using the homomorphic. Uh, encryption public key PK, resulting to a homomorphically encrypted ciphertext of the symmetric key. Uh, finally, uh, the users will outsource the symmetrically encrypted data as well as the uh, encrypted uh, key to the CSP. At this point, uh, the CSP will be able to transform 
uh, the symmetrically encrypted data to homomorphically encrypted uh, ciphertext by running the, uh, the decryption circuit uh, online. Uh, and then both entities, Alice and Bob, will normally continue the homomorphic encryption protocol that is uh, send queries for evaluating different functions, getting back results, encrypted results, decrypt them lo locally, and so on and so forth. So as we see, the main advantage of hybrid homomorphic encryption is that um, the majority of the computations is outsourced, of the expensive computations is outsourced to the CSP, uh, and thus making it uh, significantly lighter uh, on the client side. Um, so, to put it a bit more formally, uh, the main building blocks of a hybrid homomorphic encryption scheme are, uh, first of all, a homomorphic encryption scheme that consists of four algorithms, key generation, encryption, uh, evaluation, and decryption, uh, and then a symmetric key encryption scheme consisting of three algorithms, generation, encryption, and decryption. Then we can define uh, hybrid homomorphic encryption as a tuple of five algorithms, key generation, encryption, decomposition, evaluation, and decryption, uh, where the key generation algorithm takes as input a security parameter lambda uh, and internally runs the homomorphic encryption key generation algorithm, uh, returning uh, a tuple of three keys, public key, secret key, and evaluation key, as we saw before. Uh, then we have the, homomorph the hybrid homomorphic encryption encryption algorithm, uh, which, uh, in, in which, first of all, we generate uh, a symmetric uh, key for a symmetric key encryption scheme, K. Uh, then we encrypt the symmetric key using the uh, homomorphic encryption public key, and subsequently we encrypt all of our data uh, symmetrically using uh, the symmetric key, K. Uh, Next, we have the decomposition algorithm that runs on the CSP side, if you want, uh, which takes as input the evaluation key, uh, uh, some symmetrically encrypted data, and the homomorphically encrypted symmetric key. Uh, at this point, the, um, the CSP will run the evaluation algorithm, um, but if you, if you recall, the evaluation algorithm takes as input uh, among other things, the description of a function f, uh, and in this case, uh, the, the function f is actually the decryption algorithm of the symmetric key encryption scheme. Now, this will result uh, in a sequence of ciphertext uh, C prime that are actually uh, homomorphically encrypted ciphers. Uh, finally, the evaluation and the decryption algorithms are identical to, um, to that of uh, a homomorphic encryption scheme. So now we can move on to our main contribution, that is a symmetrical disguise, which is a complete protocol um, based on hybrid homomorphic encryption. The main building blocks of our uh, scheme is a homomorphic encryption scheme, uh, HC, uh, a symmetric key encryption scheme, SKE, a signature scheme, a first and second pre image resistant hash function H, and finally a synchronized clock between different entities. Uh, and what are these entities? So we have Three, main, three different entities participating in our protocol. First of all, we have the CSP, which is responsible for storing and transforming symmetrically encrypted data to homomorphic ciphertexts. Then we have an analyst that wishes to perform computations on data of various users. And finally, we have the users uh, that encrypt their data locally using a symmetric cipher and outsource them to the CSP. Uh, as a matter of fact, instead of simply encrypting the data locally using a symmetric key, uh, they also encrypt that symmetric key using a, a, homomorphic, a homomorphic encryption public key, as we will see uh, in the follow-up follow slides. So, first we have a, a setup algorithm uh, in which the first step consists of uh, for all parties uh, to generate uh, their, uh, the corresponding, uh, the, the corresponding public, uh, public private key pairs. Uh, and um, as a next step, uh, the analyst outsources to uh, to the CSP uh, its evaluation key, 
as part of a message M1 that has been uh, secured with further uh, encryption and signatures to prevent uh, replay attacks and uh, man the middle attacks. So uh, the CSP will, um, will receive the message M1. It will verify the freshness and the integrity of the message based on the timestamp and the signature. Uh, and if everything is OK, it will store the evaluation key for uh, future use. Then we have uh, an addition protocol. Uh, in this case, the users want to uh, uh, want to send and uh, and store their data uh, on the CSP uh, in order for an analyst A to later perform some computation on them. So uh, the first step is for the users to generate uh, a symmetric key uh, for a symmetric key encryption scheme. Uh, and then encrypt their data using that symmetric key. Finally, uh, they, finally, the users will encrypt their symmetric key with the public key of the analyst A. Uh, as a next step, the users will outsource their data um, to the CSP through uh, the message M2, uh, which contains both uh, the symmetrically encrypted data and the homomorphically encrypted symmetric key. Uh, one, once again, the CSP will verify uh, the freshness and the and integrity of the message, uh, and it will store uh, and it will run the HHC decomposition algorithm to transform the symmetrically encrypted data to homomorphic ciphertext. Uh, finally, we have uh, a query algorithm in which the analyst queries uh, the CSP uh, in order to run some functions uh, on the user's data. Uh, and this is initiated by, uh, by the analyst sending a message M3 <coughs> to the CSP containing the description of the function F that, um, they, wish to, uh, that they wish to apply on the data. Uh, the CSP once again will verify the freshness and the integrity of message 3 based on uh, the timestamp uh, T3 uh, as well as the signature of the analyst. Uh, and then it will run the <coughs> evaluation algorithm uh, given as input the evaluation key of the analyst, the description of the function as well as uh, the sequence of, uh, of the ciphertext. Uh, and the output of that algorithm will be an encrypted result uh, C res that will be sent back to the analyst via M4. Uh, and upon reception, the analyst will once again verify the freshness and the integrity and the integrity of message M4, once again based on the timestamp T4 as well as the signature of the CSP. Uh, and as a last step, uh, it will run uh, the decryption algorithm uh, giving his own secret key uh, as input as well as uh, the um, uh, the C res that it received back from the CSP. Now, concerning the security analysis of our scheme, first of all, for our threat model, we assume that adversaries uh, can tamper with exchange messages, they can perform replay attacks and man the middle attacks, and the only restriction that we, uh, that, that, that we have is that the, the, the adversaries do not collude with the CSP. Uh, that is actually a valid assumption since uh, in this case, we would require security in a scenario where all the secret keys are known. Um, so, uh, based on this threat model and restrictions, uh, we, uh, in our paper, we formally prove uh, the following theorem. So, uh, which says that if we have, uh, uh, if the encryption schemes and the signature schemes satisfy some basic uh, security notions, uh, then uh, then our construction is secure against man the middle attacks, replay attacks, and tampering with exchange messages. So from, I will not go into more de details about the proof, but you can find, um, you can find all the details in, uh, in our paper. Uh, finally, concerning the experiments, uh, all experiments were conducted uh, on an uh, Intel Core i7 laptop with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the main uh, focus of the experiments were on the core algorithms of the scheme, that is the setup, add, and query algorithms, and the experiments were run for um, 200 different data items, that means uh, 200 different users sending uh, data to the CSP. Uh, so, for the setup algorithm that contained 
only methods M1. Uh, we had to measure uh, on the analyst side um, the public encryption key generation, the HAT key generation uh, algorithms, uh, as well as the construction of the message M1. Uh, then on the user side, we only have the generation of a public encryption keeper. Uh, and on the CSP side, uh, we had the public encryption key generation algorithm as well as the verification of the message M1. So um, the average time for all of these um, functions were measured at uh, 0 0.19 seconds. Uh, then for the uh, for the addition um, for the addition protocol, um, we only had message M2. The analyst does not participate in that uh, protocol. Uh, for the user, uh, on the user side, we have uh, the HAT encryption algorithm, uh, the SKE encryption algorithm, as well as uh, the construction of the message M2. Uh, and on the CSP side, we have uh, the verification of the M2 message, uh, as well as uh, the execution of the decomposition algorithm of the hybrid homomorphic encryption scheme. And uh, this was measured at, uh, at an average of uh, 3,825 seconds. Now, bear in mind that uh, this may seem like very expensive, but the main computational burden uh, occurs on the CSP side and not on the user side as in a normal hybrid uh, homomorphic encryption scheme. Uh, finally, for the query protocol, we have messages M3 and M4. Uh, the analyst function in this one is to just to uh, generate the function, uh, the message M3. Uh, the users do not participate in that protocol and the CSP uh, has to verify M3, run the evaluation algorithm, and generate a uh, result message M4. And the average time for that was measured at 16.91 seconds. Um, finally, uh, just to have a better overview of what's going on, uh, we uh, we performed a comparison with uh, um, with a homomorphic encryption scheme that is the BFV homomorphic encryption scheme, uh, and we chose exactly the same parameters. That is, uh, for example, a polynomial degree of uh, sixteen thousand three hundred eighty four, um, and the main difference is that in uh, uh, in the hybrid homomorphic encryption approach, the user encrypts data symmetrically, uh, whereas in the uh, simple homomorphic encryption approach, uh, the data uh, the, the user continually uses homomorphic encryption for all uh, data items. So as you can see here, um, the the hybrid homomorphic encryption approach that is uh, the approach that we suggested uh, outperforms. Um, a simple uh, homomorphic encryption scheme that is uh, BFV uh, by a factor of almost uh, three for um, 200 uh, data items, and this um, clearly proves the uh, efficiency of uh, of our work. And uh, that is all from my side. And uh, thank you very much.